Good day to all of you. For today's video, we will be going to talk about the period that draws inspiration from the classical art and culture of ancient Greece and Rome. And it is the Neoclassical period. So after the Renaissance, which was a period of exploration and expansiveness, came a reaction in the direction of order and restraint. So generally speaking, this reaction developed in France in the mid-17th century and in England 30 years later. And then it dominated European literature until the last part of the 18th century. And then the new restrained mystery and obscurity are considered symptoms of incompetence rather than signs of grandeur. The ideal style is lucid, polished, and precisely appropriate to the genre of work and the social position of its characters. Then, the period is called neoclassical because its writers looked back to the ideals and art forms of classical times. Their respect for the past led them to be conservative both in art and politics. Always aware of the conventions appropriate to each genre, they modeled their works on classical masterpieces and heeded the rules thought to be laid down by classical critics. Neoclassical Assumptions and Their Implications Neoclassical thinkers could use the past as a guide for the present because they assumed that human nature was constant, essentially the same, regardless of time and place. They believe that art should express this essential nature. Neoclassical writers aim to articulate general truth rather than unique vision, to communicate to others more than to express themselves. So we have social themes. Neoclassical writers saw themselves as well as their readers and characters above all as members of society while Renaissance writers were sometimes fascinated by rebels and later Romantic artists often glorified them. Neoclassical artists expected people to conform to established social norms, for individual opinion was far less likely to be true than was the consensus of society, developed over time and embodied in custom and tradition. As the rules for proper writing should follow, so should the rules for civilized conduct in society. We have also the last one, the age of reason. The classical ideals of order and moderation which inspire this period, its realistically limited aspirations and its emphasis on the common sense of society rather than individual imagination could all be characterized as rational. And indeed, it is often known as the age of reason. Reason had traditionally been assumed to be the highest mental faculty, but in this period, many thinkers considered it as a sufficient guide in all areas. As reason should guide human individuals and societies, it should also direct artistic creation. Neoclassical art is not meant to seem a spontaneous outpouring of emotion or imagination. Emo emotion appears, of course, but is consciously controlled. A work of art should be logically organized and should advocate rational norms, sharp and brilliant wit, produced within the clearly defined ideals of neoclassical art and focus on people in their social context. Make this perhaps the world's greatest age of comedy and satire. The Neoclassical Period Neoclassicism implies in actually a return to the classical spirit and the spirit of ancient Greece and Rome. So the age is also called pseudo-classical age to mean the artificiality of the writers of this age. So they imitated the ancient Greek and Roman literary tradition but lack the originality of the writers of that period. So it is the age of good sense and the age of good reason. 
So here are some characteristics of neoclassical period. First is the imitation of classics. So one of the most important features of the neoclassical literature is the imitation of classics of ancient Greek and Roman literature. The writers of this age imitated the style of the ancient Greek and Roman writers. The neoclassical writers, Dryden, Pope, Swift, and Johnson, were convinced that excellence and perfection in the literary art have been attained by the Roman writers of antiquity. Thus, they can only copy the models of perfection and excellence. So the third characteristic is the concept of man. The neoclassical literature considers man as a limited being, having limited power. A large number of satires and works of the period attacks the man for his pride and advise him to remain content with his limited power of knowledge. Thus, man in neoclassical literature remains a being of limited means and power. The fourth characteristic of neoclassical literature is literary forms. Among the neoclassical forms of literature, the most famous were the essay, both in verse and prose, while drama declined and almost disappeared during the latter part of the period. Novel made its beginning. The literature of the age was mostly comic and satirical. An important failure of this age was to produce tragedy. Then, the fifth characteristic, which is neoclassical drama. Neoclassical dramas falls into two phases. The restoration drama begins in the latter part of the 17th century and the sentimental drama begins on the 18th century. In the Restoration Age, drama rose in the form of comedy of manners, but in the second phase, it declined as the Elizabeth dramas, like those of Shakespeare's, were reproduced and the age itself did not produce. Thus, the decline of drama happened. Next, the sixth characteristics the new restraint writers started inventing new words and regularizing vocabulary and grammar complex bodily metaphysical language such as shakespeare used in his major tragedies was clarified and simplified the seventh characteristics is reason the age is called the age of reason. Thinkers of this age considered reason to be the highest mental faculty and sufficient guide in all areas. Both religious beliefs and morality were grounded on reason. Emotion and imagination are also present, but in a controlled way. Neoclassical literature is characterized by order, structure, and accuracy. In direct opposition to Renaissance attitudes, where man was seen as basically good, the neoclassical writers portrayed man as inherently flawed. They emphasized restraint, self-control, and common sense. This was a time when conservatism flourished in both politics and literature. Another characteristic of neoclassical period of literature is much attention is paid to technical perfection rather than innovation or natural genius. Then, human beings are given most importance. The literary ideal of the age was art for man's sake, not art for art's sake. Furthermore, general rather than individual qualities of the human beings are given most importance and lastly sophistication in thought and style is emphasized therefore the neoclassical period in literature brought a sense of decorum and stability to writers 
there were rules to be carefully followed. It was a time of careful moral appearance, though appearances were more valued than honesty. However, some of England's most brilliant literature can be credited to this era.